Thank you for joining us. For your encouragement, we bring you this biblical sermon from Pastor Stephen Herod, taught at Bethel Baptist Church East in Detroit. We hope that it leaves you refreshed and inspired. We hope that when time permits, you will come and worship with us. Good evening, Pastor Herod, Sister Herod, Bethel Baptist Church East family. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come on before you, Lord God. Thanking you, Lord, for what you've done, Lord. Lord, you have been good to us. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Thanking you, Lord, for all your blessings and how you've taken care of us, Lord God. We pray for all our sick and the one that's dealing with the curve the CV-19, Lord God. Pray for the healing. We pray, Lord God, for a divine intervention. We pray for our congregation, Lord. We thank you, O oh God, for you are the Almighty God, and, and there's nothing you can't do, and nothing can happen to us that you can't do something about. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This evening, the lesson will be coming from Matthew, the 8th chapter, starting at the 24th verse through the 29th. And I'll read. That's Matthew, the 7th chapter, the 24th verse through the 27th. Therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine, and do them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the flood came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, but it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that hear these sayings of mine, and do them not, shall be like unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. This lesson, the title will be, The Two Foundations. You see, a foundation is a support on which something rests. And in this parable here, Jesus was completing now the Sermon on the mountain with his disciples and the scribe and the rest. And the, he was finishing his discourse. And what he was saying, he was speaking about the wise and foolish builder. And that typ typifies our lives. One is either building their lives as a wise builder on a solid foundation of the rock of Jesus Christ. Or the foolish person build their lives on sinking sand. And that's not a Christ that's one on where they have in life their way. Sometimes one does not understand, they do not know. But Christ is giving a parable here now and telling them that when the rain and trials of life come in our lives, the house that built upon the rock on Jesus Christ will stand. He's talking about trouble, trial, tribulation, and sickness, and any other thing that come our way. Because the house that built upon the rock of Jesus Christ is going to be able to weather the storm of life. And when we get in a situation like we have today, and that house of ours, our lives is built on nothing but the rock of Jesus Christ will help us survive, that we can survive the storms of life because they will come. Because see, the rain falls on the just as well as the unjust. And so Jesus is making a plane here now and letting them know at the end of this discourse that we have to build our lives on either the solid foundation or the foundation of sin. You see, all other grounds besides the rock of Jesus Christ is seeking sin anyway because we know in this life the Lord is telling us that they're going to come. Trouble is going to come. Unknown events, diseases, all these things are going to come up on the face of the earth until his return. Now, 
You see, the situation that the scribes and the Pharisees was dealing with, they never heard a man speak like Jesus, you see. The very presence of Jesus had an awe about him. There was something about this man, Jesus, that they recognized. They wanted to know, where did you get this authority? And where did you get this teaching from? And when we find out, you see, the scribe was master of the Old Testament. They was learned men in scripture. But you see, they had the word, but they was talking to the original word, the Holy Ghost here. And they, and he was teaching them. They didn't, you see, they were going on reference of the past rabbis and past teachers and some of them was even dealing with Moses, but you see, they had the original word there. That's why they were astonished at his teaching, you see. And what he was saying, that you have to hear the word of God, obey the word of God, that's how one sustained the rain and the wind that's going to come up on our line, you see. And he was making it very plain, not only did he have authority, you see, he had the power, you see. Authority is always at the mercy of power. You see, one can have the authority to do something, but it's the power behind that authority. You see, we have, you see, if you look at Acts 1 and say what? You say receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you. And so when we read the word of God, we ask the Holy Spirit to give us understanding and revelation knowledge of his word. Because unless the Holy Ghost give us the revelation knowledge of the word, we can understand the word of God, you see. You see, holy men wrote the Bible as they were moved upon by the Spirit of God. You see, this didn't come out of some dead man's brain. No, no, no. no. And see, what they when, when the scribes and Pharisees were referring back to their different rabbis, those men, they were men like you and me. But now, Jesus Christ is the living word. That's why he spoke with such authority and power, which we don't accustomed to. As a matter of fact, they were astonished at such a, where they want to know, where did he come from? Where did he get this knowledge and wisdom, the word of God? You see, the word of God can stand the test of time, you see. The word of God is just like, just like the light, it, it can defend itself. And you see, he was telling them how to build this house. You see, Jesus knew something about a building a house, because what? His occupation was a carpenter. He was a master builder, just like he is the master teacher. You see, the Holy Ghost is the teacher. And what happened when we come to the word of God? That's why we ask the Lord to give us revelation and understanding the word of God. And Jesus did it in love. You see, love has to be the basic of our teaching and understanding. You see, our lives is such based on the rock of Jesus Christ and love. You see, and so we are his disciples ever learning and coming to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's why our lives built on that rock can stand when these trials, when the rains and storms of life come upon us, you see. And, and so he's telling the truth here. And the foolish person doesn't obey. You see, you can't just hear the word of God, but one has to do the word of God. You have to obey the word of God. And that's what Jesus is telling the, these, this, his disciple on this course on the mountain. Because see, this was the beginning of his earth, of his earth for many, you see. Also, the, the mountainside where Jesus was teaching. He was telling them also that when these things come upon us, we're not to fear, but we're to maintain our faith in the word of, word of God because we have been building our lives all along on the word of God. You see, the word of God will stand. It's Isaiah 48. The flower will fade, the grass will, but the word of our God is going to stand forever. You see, when that life of yours, built on the solid rock of Jesus Christ, it's not just you there, but you have the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost with us. You see, and the scripture is that the scripture says what? 
if God be for us, who can be against us? You see, no matter whatever the trial is, whatever the disease is, the Lord is the remedy for that situation, you see. Because his word is going to stand. He ever, his word will not return to him void, that you find in Isaiah. And so, the reason the scribe was such, so astonished at this, they couldn't fathom where he get this. Where he, where he got it from, you see. But it was what? He was the living word. He knew. And so we are not to be hard-hearted, but we are to be not only hear of the word of God, but do of the word of God. And that's what will make us what? Successful. That's what will make us prosper. That's what will make us happy. And it will, Because the joy of the Lord is our strength, you see. And so when we get the word of God in us, the logos, the real word, the true word of God, you see, because the true word of God will stand the test. It will stand the time. And as we read the word of God, you can be assured that you have the right word of God. Because as the time comes and the situation happens, and as we deal with things in life, because the word of God says what? That vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I will repay you see, he's telling these people, disciples, because he knows that what? He's not going to be with them all way. And so, when we stand on the word of God, we stand on the solid rock, on the foundation, on the solid foundation, which is Jesus Christ. And the other foundation, the sink and sand, if that life is not built on Jesus Christ, when these things do appear on the earth and come, that, that, found, that life have nothing to hold on to. It's like the son say, what my soul is anchored in the Lord. When your soul is anchored in the word of God, you're going to stand because you're standing on the word of God, which will not fail, you see. And Jesus Christ is that word that we can stand and be assured that we're building on a solid foundation, knowing that God loves us, God cares us, and he can do something about each of our situations when we pray to him and standing on the word of God because he's watch over that word to perform it you see because what he is the word of God and he knows the word of God because the word of God is what is, is really what that word is ever settled in the heaven you see God is not going to change the order of things that he's already established the Holy Ghost because what he's God and he told the ending in the beginning and so on this discourse as he finished, as he would finish this discourse, his, his, the, he was telling them that as you stand, your life built on the word of God. The final test is not in what we think of ourselves or what others think of us. The final test is what would God say about us? And so it's the law that we have to pray to and obey his word in order to achieve eternal life. We accept Jesus Christ as our personal savior and build our lives on the rock. We do what he says because what? He know the way. He is the way. He is the answer. And when we stand on that foundation, knowing this of assurance that nothing can happen to us, that God can't do something about it. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord, for our pastor, our church, and our family. We thank you, Lord, that in a time of trouble, God is a present help. We thank you, Lord God, that we can stand on the word of God. Your word will never fail us. We thank you, Lord, that we can call that name Jesus, that name Jesus that will deliver us, that name Jesus that will cover us, the name of Jesus that will protect us and keep us in all our ways. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for listening to today's message. We hope that it left you refreshed and inspired. For more information on Pastor Herod and Bethel East, please like and follow us on Facebook. As always, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.